All right, Bulls and Bears, back with another dose. It is Friday. It's late on Friday. A lot of you will be watching this on Saturday, which is the last day of the month, August 31st. Either way, thank you for being here. Really appreciate it. And let's go ahead and get right into the economic news. A lot of stuff happening here. Uh, we all know the powers that be, the bankers, the politicians, uh, the money printers. They're making people think, and they're succeeding. They're making people think that this economy is strong, that the consumer is resilient. Now, how are they doing that? They're doing that with banks continuing to loan out money. Loans are still easier to get. In fact, there's more down payment assistance programs today than at any point, more than at any point in history. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes here. But first, let's talk about the big headline news that most economic news uh, broadcasters are talking about. Um, let's start here with the PCE. This is core personal consumption expenditures. It went up year over year, but it's being touted as good news. The Fed's favorite inflation indicator increased 0.2% in July. And yes, it's up uh, 26 from a year ago, but it's good news because experts, quote unquote experts, predicted 2.7% increase. So good news, right? Actually, yeah, the, the investors... Uh, the top, what uh, the top ten percent that own about ninety percent of stocks, they went ahead and bought the markets up based on this news. Another record close in the Dow Jones. Now let's rewind a little bit. Let's go back to twenty twenty, and what did I say right here in this channel? Uh, a lot of people said, "Okay, Grandpa Joe, he's in now. He's in the office. The economy is going to crash because he's he doesn't understand the economy. He's never ran a business." Folks, you see what happens here. These people don't run the economy. They don't make the markets go up or down. It's all about the banks and people's ability to borrow money and spend money. Uh, if that continues to happen, we don't have to see a correction. We don't have to see a crash. We don't have to see any deflation. They could keep this thing going into hyperinflation. All you have to do is look around the world and look at all the different countries that did not allow deflation. They kept creating more money out of thin air. and the rest is history. Inflation doesn't have to stop. It can keep going. Now, luckily, we haven't spiraled into hyperinflation yet uh, because a lot of people are getting maxed out or close to being maxed out on their credit cards. And that has the increase in debt slowing, even though it's increasing, uh, it is slowing. And that's one of the things they're trying to say is good. So as consumer spending is slowing, even though debt is still increasing, um, inflation is slowing. But are prices coming down? No. So back to my example, was it last report or two reports ago, the 500 pound man uh, this year, instead of gaining 20 pounds and going up to 520 pounds, he only gained 19. So the 500 pound man only is uh, going from 500 pounds to 519 pounds, but that's good because the old him, the old person would have been at 520. So he cut back, he held back on eating a few cupcakes, and now instead of gaining uh, 20 pounds, in the year, he only gained 19. Folks, that's inflation. The 500-pound man is getting bigger, getting more unhealthy, getting closer to the grave. But yet, it's good news because he gained 19 pounds instead of 20. So there you go. Uh, Dow Jones, another record high. And that's uh, good news, right? Well, for some people, if you're in a 401k, uh, if you have your money in the markets. But remember, it's mostly the top 10% that are gaining the wealth from these all-time highs. And... It's just a paper gain if you don't sell. But we did see a lot of big multi-billionaires sell some very big positions in their stocks over the past year, two, three years. Zuckerberg, uh, Bezos, to name a couple. Um, Warren Buffett. I mean, the big, the big money people are selling big portions of their position. You have to ask, ask yourself why. And I continue to say uh, and expect... One, on one hand, you want to say expect the unexpected, but I've kind of got a handful of things that I expect to happen here just in the next month or two um, that's going to cover this whole thing up. Anyways, we'll talk about that more later here. Uh, a couple other things to get into today. Personal savings rate dropped again. Uh, we're being told the consumer is resilient. The consumer is strong. So if that was the case, why does the consumer savings rate continue to drop and it was kind of a big drop this time here. So in April it was 3.5, uh, May of this year 3.3. So a drop from April. This is how much money people have left over at the end of the month. And this new number just came out today for July. But then uh, from May to June 
from 3.3 to 3.1. So we see people are running out of money. They're draining their accounts. Uh, and another 0.2% drop down from 3.1 in June, 2.9% is the savings rate now in July, folks. This is the lowest savings rate in many, many decades. In fact, the only time it even got close to being this low was right before the financial crisis. People are, a lot of people anyways, are tapped out, folks. And that's why you see the slowdown in spending. And that's why you're seeing a slowdown in inflation. Prices are still going up. As we just talked about, prices are up year over year, but the increases are getting less. Um, and people are taking that as great news. Anyways, uh, let's look at a chart here, still on the topic of the savings rate here. This is out of Wolf Street. Personal savings rate is a percentage of income not spent. You looked all the way to the edge here. Um, we're bouncing off the lows that we were at, but in 2022, savings rate increased, but then it started dropping again and in fact if you look back we're at levels now uh, right around the financial crisis uh, so what does that tell you should tell you that there's actually a financial crisis going on right now but it's being covered up because the banks have been allowed to keep lending out money but we know if you watch my report we know that october 1st october 1st is the new reserve requirements will it be implemented in october or Will that not be implemented? They're talking about implementing it October 1st. But is that too risky because we know what's coming up in November? Um, will they just push it out, push it back like they've done many other things? Right? You think you're getting close to the finish line or uh, the end of this and they move the goalposts and you have to you know, look for another uh, date or another timeline here. So they could do a lot of things to keep this propped up. There's no guarantee. But I'm, uh, I'm being very cautious right now the way I'm investing right now. Also, the powers that be are desperate, desperate to keep the housing market propped up, uh, so much so that we have the down payment assistance programs now popping up for non-citizens. We've got it in California here, 100 and something thousand dollars of down payment assistance, $25,000 or uh, $30,000 rather in Oregon. And uh, one of the candidates out there, Ms. Harris, is talking about a $25,000 nationwide down payment assistance program folks and you know she probably got a lot of money from the association of realtors you know they probably gave her a lot of money for that uh, let's talk about this though another sign that people are getting really really in dire straits in bad shape financially um food pantry shortages popping up all over the place look at this just today bridge of hope needs help amid food shortage there at the food pantry uh, hamilton county food pantry shortage uh, they're asking people for help Food banks across Commonwealth, shortage of supplies. Uh, food bank declares state of crisis and open letter. Folks, these are just in the past few weeks too. Uh, food banks work to keep up with summer food shortage for kids. Um, why are so many people needing to go to food banks if everything was fine? I can think of a few reasons, but one, uh, probably a big one is the economy is not doing that good. If you look at the Dow Jones, if you look at the markets, Yes, if you look at the top 10%, even top 20, 30%, yes, but most people not doing so good. In fact, a lot of most of that 70% probably just scraping by as uh, prices continue to stay stubbornly high. But that's naturally going to be the case if the banks keep loaning out money like they're loaning out here. Now, for those of you out there that like to look at numbers because maybe you're just a numbers person, look at this here. Median new home price back in the year 2000 was 166,000 back then, 24 years ago, the year 2000. The median income was just under 32,000. So 32,000 income for a $166,000 home. Uh, now, the median income is 39,682. So in 20 something years, 24 years, median income just went from about 32,000 to 39,000 folks. But the median home price, New homes went from 166,000. Got my notes over here, up to 405,000. Folks, you see what's going on here. Inflation is outpacing incomes by a large amount, but you have the top 10% out there buying a lot of the homes right now. You have the banks out there still loaning out money, so the bottom 70% can still keep spending, still keep consuming, 
uh, still keep going further and further into debt, even though their savings are being de depleted. Uh, 401k is being withdrawn early. Emergency funds withdraws. Uh, breaking records again this year on pace to beat 2023, which was a record. Uh, folks, this is insane to a lot of people, but it's really pretty simple when you see, when you try to put the pieces of the puzzle together, put two and two together, connect the dots, you see why there has not been a crash or a correction yet. Um, so it's going to get very interesting though. Uh, in the next couple months here, Chicago faces 920 uh, 982, it's even worse than I thought, a $982 million budget shortfall for 2025. Uh, folks, nearly a uh, billion dollar budget shortfall. California is in trouble. Um, they're trying to pay for things that they just don't have money for. It's the same thing with the U.S. government. They have to continue to borrow money just to function, borrowing money just to function. And the only way this is possible is not having sound money, not having any limits to the amount of money that can be borrowed or created in this case because all the money that's borrowed is just created at the click of a mouse all right folks let's shift gears a little bit here let's talk about something that happened here locally here in san diego my neck of the woods uh, a street performer was ticketed for littering for blowing bubbles i'm not even joking folks blowing bubbles there's a financial uh, aspect to this here so bear with me street performer blew bubbles in the park officials cited him for littering uh there he is right there and um, it actually comes with a video. Let's play that here. And you can see he's got the bubble bucket out there. He's got the ropes. He's got the big bubbles flying everywhere. So I believe street performers, and I believe this person takes tips or donations. I'm sure he's got a hat or something out there, a bucket maybe, for people to drop tips into. So maybe he's making money. But when you get a citation for littering, for blowing bubbles, what do you do? Do you pack up? Do you go home? Uh, no, he keeps he keeps going. Let me just fast forward here. Here's the police officer. Imagine being a police officer having to do this. How would you feel being a police officer having to do this? Would you feel good about your job <laughs> trying to stop the bubble guy or trying to find the bubble guy? So here's the thing. He's going to end up paying a citation or a penalty, but he kept blowing the bubbles. He didn't leave. So apparently, maybe he's making more in tips than he was or then he'll have to pay for this citation. So maybe it's still, he's still making money, maybe. Right? So yeah, let me know what you think about that, folks. Pretty sad, though. Let me give you my quick two cents on this. How's about giving citations to the one blowing the economic financial bubbles, the ones blowing the housing bubble, the cost of living bubble? Where's the citation for them? Oh, they don't get one. They get paid millions of dollars, though. It's pretty sick, folks. Um, anyways, maybe some of you agree that he should be uh, fined for blowing these bubbles the the bubbles they're in the air the bubble could pop of course they all pop at some point the soap whatever it is that makes the bubbles will fall down it could get in somebody's eyes it could get on the grass and it could cause some pollution maybe it is littering is it littering let me know down below does he deserve the citation or is this copying utterly ridiculous go out and find some real crime somewhere stop picking on this bubble blower at the park <laughs> all right, people, let me know what you think about this and all the other news today. The inflation number, the 500 pound man gaining more weight, but it's good news. Record notch Dow Jones Industrial Average, folks. Top 10% buying up the stocks. What do you think about all this, folks? Where does it end? Uh, please make sure you are subscribed. Very important time to stay ahead of the economic financial curve. And hope you come back to more uh, for more news on this channel, more updates. Be back really soon, everybody. Keep stacking. Bye for now. Peace.